Hi guys, Mr. Zigner here. We're going to be using Google Sheets to help us with statistics. All right, now that sounds a little scary, but today we're only going to be looking at mean, median, mode, and range. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you need when working with statistics would be a set of data. So I'm just going to type in data there. And well, actually, right away, I see something I want to change. Um, if we click up here in this gray rectangle above the number one and to the left of the letter A, it will highlight the entire spreadsheet. So there we go. Click there. And now the things I want to change are, well, let's start with the font. Not too happy with that font. Hmm. What does, ooh, syncopate. Oh, that looks kind of cool. All righty. Um, might want to make that a little bit larger. Let's kick that up to maybe 12. Uh, it's a very thin font, so maybe I'll make that bold. Oh, that's nicer. I also love when things are centered. That's just me personally. So let's come over here to horizontal alignment. We click that down arrow, and there we go, centered. Oh, very nice. Now, another nice thing is that's going to apply to the entire spreadsheet, not just to this one cell. Okay. Let me just click here for now. Now let's see, what will be the next thing? Well, I, let's see, maybe 10 pieces of data should be enough. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, of course, if you have more than 10 pieces of data, you can certainly extend this further down. All right, let's put borders around that so it looks like a table. So we click right here, borders, and I'm just gonna choose all borders. Although, while I'm here, there are some other things you can change. Right here, you can change the color of the border. Uh, let's have a little bit of fun. Maybe make that a uh, like a dark blue. Don't know if you can see the difference. Um, you could make the line that is creating the table a little bit thinner or thicker. Move that up a little bit just so you can see the difference. Okay, great. Um, another thing I love when the heading of my table is a slightly different color uh, in the background. So I'm just going to click on A1. And right here, this fill color looks like a paint can tipping over. Let's put a nice background color behind that. So nothing too dark so I can still see the word data. How about this light blue? Yeah, sure, that works. Whatever color you want, of course. OK, so the things we're going to be finding uh, out about our set of data today would be things like the sum. That's when you add up the numbers. Uh, the mean, the median, the mode. Now, um, I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video, but some data sets will have no mode. Some might have more than one mode. So uh, there are different formulas you can use here. We're going to use a very basic one. But again, I'll come back to that when we make it to mode later on. Um, how about mean, median, mode, the maximum amount? Whoops. Oh, I went beyond the edges of the box. I'll have to talk about that later. The minimum. Okay, that one goes a little bit outside too. And the range of our data. Oh, let's skip a line on that one. Range. There we go. Alrighty. So I'd like to put create three columns uh, right here in our row to find the sum. So borders, all borders. Then again, come across three columns in that row. There we go. Three for the median. I'll explain why a little bit later. Three for the mode. Three for minimum and maximum. So I can just do those all in one shot. There we go. And range. All three. Uh, there we go. Let's see, you know what? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Oh, it might be nice to color code these as well. How about we do like a light red here, just so these are differentiated. Um, red, orange, I'm just using the colors of the visible light spectrum here, also called a rainbow, red, orange, yellow. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, just kind of makes it more fun. How about these are side by side. Let's make those like a light blue. And then violet. How about we just use a purplish color for that? There we go. Um, now that you can see my problem here, uh, maximum and minimum are kind of going off the edges. There's a couple ways of solving that. So one quick way to do it 
is just come in between the letter C and D up here. And when it turns into a double arrow like that, I can click and hold and just drag over to the right a little bit. There, that fits nicely. There is another way to do it. Let me take those back. Okay, again, they're too small, right? I hover over the middle of the cell um, and there's a down arrow there. Or I could also hit the right arrow. Uh, I'm sorry, the right click on my mouse. But again, uh, probably a real great way is to hit the down arrow arrow right here and you can resize the column and now you could guess how many pixels it would be but I just like to let the uh, uh, program Google Sheets fig figure it out for itself so I click on fit to data and now watch how the boxes automatically all get adjusted in those cells to fit my data beautiful now over here um, I'd like to do a real short, quick definition, well, not definition, uh, at least explanation, keywords to help us remember what each of those words over here mean. So the sum is when you add the numbers. We're going to have to adjust that one again, aren't we? The mean is also called the average. The median, that's the middle number. And now your math teacher will talk more about that. Like average is when you add the numbers together. And then you divide by how many numbers there are. The middle number, by that I mean when you put all the numbers in order from smallest to largest, the number that's in the center of the list is the median. Mode is simply the number that occurs the most often in a set of data. Uh, the maximum, that's pretty straightforward. That's the largest number. Minimum would be the smallest number. And the range now, here's why I put range below maximum and minimum. The range is the largest number minus the smallest number. All right. Now, again, we've gone beyond the edges of our cell here. So the quick way to fix that again is to come in between the E and the F. All right. And just click and drag over. Whoop. I think I missed it. Let me try that again. There we go. Just drag it over until eh, maybe a little bit more. See, it's hard to guess that. That's pretty good. And then the other way is just to either right click right in the heading of that cell or right here when you hover, you get a little down arrow. Click that down arrow and hit resize column, fit to data, and there we go. How about we match that coloring? So this one would be red, just using a light red. Just kind of ties it together. That was the light orange. Here was the yellow, green, make both of those blue, just makes it a little nicer looking, and violet, so we were using a light purple. Okay, now to the real serious part of this is putting in our formulas. Every formula in Google Sheets starts with an equal sign. Uh, you can see me type it right here, and of course you can pause the video as needed to get these formulas. Um, and you'll also see it up here. Okay, so here we go. So this, the formula for sum is equals sum, and you're gonna see, see things pop up here because you can see there's multiple sum uh, formulas. We're just gonna use the basic one. And then we do an opening parentheses, equals sum opening parentheses. And now here's a neat quick way, instead of typing in where the numbers are going to be, you can actually do this. So I'm going to click and hold where the first number would go here in A2. And you can see over there in D1, it's starting to put that in there. And I just drag down to the last cell. There we go, which is A11. There it is. See, it put it in for me. Now I just close my parentheses and press enter. Now, currently the sum is zero. That makes sense because there's no numbers over here. Here, let me change that. Let's put a number here like uh, nine. And now the sum should be nine when I press enter. Perfect. Okay. The mean, <clears throat> that formula is, then again, they always start with an equal sign. This one has the word average. We open our parentheses, and now we repeat this little trick over here. Click and hold on A2 and drag down to the last cell that you want to find the average of. Okay. Then we close our parentheses and press enter. The average is 9 because that's the only number there. Well, how about we put in a second number so it can find the average of two numbers? So how about 9 and 7? Well, the average of 9 and 7, let's see, 9 plus 7 is 16. 
that's the sum. And then 16 divided by two is eight. So we should get eight here. Yep. So now the sum is 16 and the average, the mean is eight. See how it's changing as we go along? The median would be the number in the middle. Uh, so right now we don't have a number in the middle, but the formula is equals median. And there's that pop up, open the parentheses. Now we come over here and do our little trick. Click and hold on A2, drag down to A11, close those parentheses, and press enter. Now that's also 8. How is 8 the middle when there's only a 9 and a 7? That's because with median, if there is no middle number, because there's no third number here, it just finds the average. So really, it defaults back to doing this. But let's change it up. Let's, let's give it a third number. How about uh, 10? What would be the now the sum, the mean, and the median of 9, 7, and 10? Let's let it figure it out. There we go. Now, interesting right here. Um, let's, let's do another little trick. Since that went off the edge with a decimal number, right here, this decreases decimal places. We don't need all those decimals. So let's just get rid of some of our decimal numbers so we can actually see that amount. Let's see. Usually, like especially in middle school, um, the most a math teacher might require you to do is round to the thousandths place, which is one, two, three after the decimal. So I think I'll leave it right there. So I'm showing three numbers after the decimal. Okay, that's pretty good. The mode is the number that occurs the most. And that formula is equals mode, opening parentheses. Now we click and drag down again. And then we close our parentheses. Are you getting used to that little trick? And we press enter. Now, oh, did we get an error? Oh, no. Okay. No, there, everything's okay. So I'm going to hover over here and it'll tell me what the error is. It's basically, hey, there is no mode. There's no value that occurs more than once. Well, let's fix that. Let's, let's add another number here. How about we repeat one of our numbers? How about that seven? Let's do a second seven. So I put in another seven and right here, the mode should now change to seven. Of course, the median, the mean, and the sum may also change. Definitely the sum, the mean, and the median will probably change a little bit too. Press enter and let's see what happens. Yep. There's our mode. The number that occurred the most is seven. The maximum is real easy formula. It's equals max. Thank you very much. Whoever made that formula. We don't have to type the whole word maximum. So the maximum of all these numbers over here. So we click and hold from A2 all the way to A11. Close our parentheses. What's the biggest number over here? Well, it looks like it's the 10. Let's see if we get 10. Perfect. Now here, Google Chrome saying, hey, I could put that same formula in right here for you if you want me to. <laughs> so no, we're going to put a different formula, but thanks anyway, Google. All righty. So the minimum formula is just like the max, except we replace the word max with min, M-I-N. Opening parentheses, do our little trick again, click and drag down, close our parentheses. And now what's the smallest number over here? Well, it looks like seven is the smallest number. So now I press enter. Yep, seven's the smallest number. How about we try to change that? Let's put in a new number. How about in the, <laughs> right across from the six, let's put a six. All right, so six is now the smallest number. Let's see, that's gonna definitely change the sum. It's probably gonna change the mean, which is the average. It might change the median. It shouldn't change the mode because seven is still the number that appears the most. It shouldn't change the 10 because 10 is still the largest number, but it's definitely gonna change minimum because six is smaller than seven. Here we go. Yep, I saw a bunch of things change up here and now six is our minimum. Okay, range. There's a bunch of ways of doing range. How about we keep it real simple? There's no need to overcomplicate it. But how I like to type it in is equals. Now, especially since I have the biggest number and the smallest number, see, it's large minus small. All I have to do is click on this cell where the largest number is and then hit my minus sign and then click on this cell, because that's the smallest number. So it equals D9 minus D10. Oh, look, it's already telling me what the answer is going to be. And that makes sense, because 10 minus 6 is 4. Here we go. Bam. Well, there you go. There's a quick uh, way of putting together um, a bunch of different basic statistics that your teacher in math might ask you to figure out. Now, I didn't do this just to show you how to cheat in math class. Of course not. Um, but it's a great way to check your answers at home when your teacher is working on statistics. Yeah, you wouldn't want to just use this and get a good grade on your homework. 
and then show up for a test and not know what you're doing. So that wouldn't make any sense. So just use this spreadsheet to help you make sure that you've gotten your answers right at home. You can just sort of do a self check. That way you can feel really good about how you're going to do on that test eventually. Okay. Well, have a great day, guys. Thanks for joining me today for another computer video. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.